Welcome to FYI family, family, family. Welcome this morning. It's the seventh day of March. The seventh day, folks, already, believe it or not, we're running up to mid month already. We hope that you guys have started the day well. You've started the day strong and your day is off to a running start. We wish you guys nothing but the very, very best. Welcome to our broadcast, each and every one of you. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, rock and come in, folks. Good to see so many of you already on the live, and we're going to make sure at our end we are shared to all the credible and valid places so that others get information as well, folks. Good morning to each and every one of you. Pace, pace, and power. Good to see you folks joining us from the various places. How are you folks doing? There's a lot happening every day. Every day, folks. A lot happening. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you folks doing? Do let us know how you good folks are doing out there this morning. So many of you are already on the live. Leslie Charles, we see you there. Donna De Barros, we see you there as well. How are you guys doing? We are sharing the credible and valid information. Vashi Pollard is here too. Good to have all of you on the live. You all know how we say it colloquially, Neville Cyril. We see you there too, Neville. Neville on the live as well. Bernadette is here. Ram Singh Singh is here. Irwin Don is here. Good to see you, folks. How has your day started? How has your day started, folks? We have a, we've we've had a good start at our end. Hope that you guys are good top side. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, good to see each and every one of you. Pace and power, folks. Boots on the ground. Slippers on the ground. Oh, look, the comments rolling in now. Lyndon Gill is here. Tessa Waterman says present. <laughs> Claire Alexis Charmley, we see you there as well. Donna, Don, Don Monroe, good to see you, Don. Debbie Collins is here too. Myrna Stoby. Edward Brooms, Debbie Collins. Oh, good to have all of you folks on the live this morning. Good to have Neville. Yep. Neville says, one year will finish since Maria 20 perished. Yep. Yep, we hear you, Neville. Don Benjamin is here. Jehu Fowler is here too. Abir is here. Rihanna Mingo is here as well. Good to see all of you guys. Edward Brooms, Debbie Collins. Good to have all of you on the live this morning, folks. We'd have it no other way. Welcome to our broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy to have all of you aboard. Rihanna, Debbie, Debbie, Abira. Great to have you. Margarita Davidson. I can do the one right now. Margarita, folks. How are you guys doing? Abira. Good to have all of you on the live this morning. Abira. Evelina, Beatrice is here too. Good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome to our broadcast, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Touch on the first, first 15, folks. The first 15, wherever you're joining us from. We got a hole for some of y'all, you know. We got to we gotta stay in a holding pattern. Pick up the pace, guys. Message who you got a message. Pick, but let me pick up the pace on the lid. Good to have you guys here. We talk about picking up the pace and we have a quiet morning at this end. Quiet morning at this end. Oh, we trust all of you good people are well. We trust all of you good people are well. Where are you joining us from this morning? We trust that all is good. Good to see so many of you on the live. We're getting a little, a little glitch. A little glitch, like Mitch, somewhere close by. We're getting a little glitch. You remember Mitch with the glitch? Who oh, no, no, who oh, no, no. <laughs> a very good morning to you. 
we're going to be ending in just a second. Just making sure we make a couple adjustments at our end. But good to have each and every one of you here with us, folks, on the live. First 15 things. First 15. Debbie and Tessa. Sally Satur. Sally Satur. Satar. Some of you say Satar. We say Satur. Clyde Fowler. Good morning, folks. Roxanne. Make sure everything right. Everything is tucked away. How are you folks starting the Jilly G? Make sure all my fillings and my acrylic in the right place. My pins. Beatrice Ronaldo. Good to have you. Uh, is it Bertley Nelson? Bertel Nelson. Good to have you on the live this morning too. Judith. Judith David. Love me some partitions. Love me some partitions. First 15 folks. First 15, we got a, as a couple, lots of things happening outside in Haiti, folks. The U.S., they tell us, are pushing Haiti to a transition. Remember, I told you yesterday morning, barbecue. That's the former policeman. That's what they call him, barbecue. Who had the main gang there in Haiti. He said he, they will not stop the violence. They will not stop. Until Ariel Henry, the uh, incumbent prime minister, resigns and he is contending, barbecue that is, that the prime minister is part of the problem. Margaret Nelson, how are you doing? Ewart, Benjamin, Lennox Anderson. They said, they said that Ariel is part of the problem. Ariel, how is pronounced? Marcy Agard. I try to pronounce people's name properly because I don't like people calling my name. I don't make a big fuss out of it. But I'd rather you call me correctly. In my lifetime, the things I've been called and the mispronunciations I've had, Sharon, you know. John Jones, the worst though, the worst is when somebody messages you on Facebook. On Facebook. On your profile, which means your name is right there, and they misspell it. They misspell it. Yep. Yep. So the US is said to be pushing Haiti, pushing Henry for a quick transition. They have to get back to credible elections there in Haiti. And as you know, Kari Kamasin said that they have engaged. They are engaged on the issue of Hittiti. That's what Karakam said. Wait, what me tell you? <laughs> they said they're engaged. And it wants to know what transition? What transition? And it wants a speedy transition in Guyana. Thank you, Annette. We see you. <laughs> Naomi's all smiles this morning. Lilith McKenzie, Michaela Andrew Coates, John Jones. Yeah, they said they're pushing for a speedy transition in Hititi. Folks, wherever you join us from, I think because of we have so much more engagement, it's a little more slow pace, right? All right? I just like this morning show. I get to, I get to, I get to see you all. I get to see Naomi smile. <laughs> I get to see Irwin Dawn. Right? Or I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Send me a voice note. <laughs> Anything. Elizabeth Gaskin. Good to see you there. Ingrid Crawford. How are you folks doing? Yannet Atwa. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> Yannet, how are you doing? Donna Fresco. Good to have you, Donna. Dolly says, good morning to all the tubers. Oh, token came. Penelinus, good to have you there. Glenford Garden. Glenford is here with us this morning. Pushing for a transition there in Haiti. In other news, the talks between the Guyana Teachers Union and the government 
supposed to be today. <laughs> a man as an asset, right? As an asset, right? Naomi says, this, this is not the asset, but Naomi says that she likes the morning program because it's slow pace. Facebook is fast paced during the day. Good. So we, we start you guys off on that. <laughs> happy, happy to be of help. Now forget what the asset was, you know. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you. Oh, yes. A gentleman was telling me recently, uh, we were engaged somewhere in the city. I go carry up engaging um, Haiti. He says he like his wife likes when I give the eye. <laughs> Folks, I can't do it on cue. <laughs> it just it just happens. Yeah, Jolly. Those talks are set today, folks. Let's see what comes out of it. I have no doubt the Ghana Teachers Union, they're going to go into those talks in good faith. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, like night turns today, Siobhan and Winnell and Dolly and Roxy, as night turns today, y'all know you're talking the truth. Pray them can do some nonsense. They can say some nonsense. They can make some absurd proposal as night turns to day i'm telling you when you know the beast you're dealing with when you know the animal you're dealing with as night turns to day they can put some absurd proposal on the table all right margaret says it's the, it's the bombastic side <laughs> y'all know y'all know your label Naomi says she's praying the government keeps it private. You can be praying for a long time. They got as night turns to day. They can do some nonsense. They can say some nonsense. Watch and see. It's like they can't help themselves. But I have every confidence. I have every confidence that a Guyana Teachers Union, they're going to head into those talks in good faith. That is how they've been operating all along. Not the show wants to be out there on the front line. No teacher wants to do that. You think you understand that? Be on the be in the sun. You don't get employed to hold a placard. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh God, we got all this oil we pumping. All this money we spending. Couldn't we take care of our teachers? Huh? Someone sent us some. Um, what was it? A graphic quite recently showing how people in one of the Caribbean countries had a, a real race quite recently in pay. Teachers, that is. Not a bogus anything. A real race in pay. 13%. And the different categories of teacher. I don't think anything was below 8. I don't think anything was below 10%. Was it Turks and Caicos? Where was it? Somebody sent us a graphic recently. A real raise in pay. Right? But we know that the administration we have, they're going to say or do something. Folks, they're going to put a proposal on the table. There can be nothing to write home about. And that's one of my Aunt Elizabeth's favorite phrases. It wasn't anything to write home. <laughs> it wasn't anything to write home about. But we're going to watch it. Hmm? Right? Eward Benjamin said, I don't trust Priya. Welcome. Welcome to the club. You want treasurer or secretary? <laughs> they can put something on the table. That upsets this whole country. Yeah. It won't be anything to write home about. Nigel Plus says 100%. Beryl Crawford, Chevron McDonald, we see you there. Loretta Argyle, we see you there as well. Guys, we trust it. All is good at your end. We watching this. The talks are set for today. 
they said to be meeting in the boardroom of the Ministry of Education. It's very interesting because I remember Priya saying just the other day that education don't handle salaries. You have over by the Oxford president. All right. Kylo, Texas, Gaston, Brown, and Antigua approved 14% for public servants, for public sector workers. And Dinga Oil, as far as we know, Dinga Gold, Diamond, Bauxite, Timber. All right. All live in blessed with the sea. Sun, sand, and sea. And they're given 14%. They're given 14%. I had my doubts about Gaston Brown. Kylo Tech. I had my doubts. I got some lingering doubts still, to be honest. But when I was in Antigua, the um, year before the last, November, I think it was, two years ago, I met some Guyanese there who give me a different picture. Who give me a different picture of Gaston Brown. And how he has been very helpful to Guyanese in Antigua and Barbuda. So Gaston seemed to have a head on his shoulder. And something between his ears. You can't say the same for everybody. Right? You can't say. And GDG makes a point. Thank you, GDG. It's 14% of a larger salary. It's 14% of a larger salary. Thank you for that intervention. Please and thanks. So by day's end, by the time I see you guys tonight, we should have a clearer picture. I like what the Trinity said, picture. We say picture. How am I feeling? How am I feeling? Picture. We have a clear picture. Put me the Trinity on this one. Just this one. We shall have a clear picture, picture, by the end of the day, and what transpired. I want it from the horse's mouth. I want it from Mr. Light. I want it from Coretta. I want it from them. You know? What's going down? Where's that Coretta right now? You all know Chris is a warrior. You all know Mark is a warrior. Mark is a gladiator. So we're hoping for the best folks be watching this. We're watching this. We're watching this. Let me see if we can help us out this morning. You know, we always do some, we always do some impromptu things around this, this side. Right? Who is we own people? We is we own people. And just for y'all, just for y'all, valid, credible information. All right? Don't mix you up with nothing else. Don't mix us up with any... <laughs> We're watching to see what happens here. Folks? We're watching to see what, what happens here and how it goes down. But these talks are set to go down today. Boardroom of the Ministry of Education. And we know the GTU is going to go into these talks in good faith. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Roxanne Jonas, Neville Seatel, good to have you. Margaret, good to have you as well. Dolly, I see you there. Neville said, don't trust them. <laughs> Never said, don't trust them. Vashi said, waiting patiently. Vashi says, waiting patiently. Never, um, not never. Dexter said, just come. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> never said, good morning, everybody. 
Sandra Hanover, we see you too. Ewart Benjamin. Folks, quite a few things we're following this morning. We're going to have a mover. Let me see if we can get a clearer picture. A clearer picture on what might be likely to go down this morning. Brunel, I see you there. Linden, see you there as well. Good to have all of you on the live this morning. I try my luck in a direction. Never say I got no confidence. Ain't got no confidence. But good to see each and every one of you. Martin Thomas, we see you there as well. Right? Naomi said prayer turning up with you. Look if you turn back. <laughs> we sell the bag, we can get teachers 14% across the board. We sell that bag, teachers can get a 14% across the board. In addition to that, folks, they're telling us the Ghana Trade Unions Congress, you know, the president is legendary. The legendary folks, Lincoln Lewis, they've asked to join this case as well. Concerning the Ghana Teachers Union and the proposal to cut salaries and all that. That's what they're telling us. And he has granted them permission to join this litigation. So we're watching that. Marilyn Thomas, we're watching that. Edward Brooms. Sandal Kisun like it different. Sandal Kisun like it different. I didn't hear too much about Sandal Kisun in the past. I must admit. Forbes, he was the man radar. Right? But Sandal is making joke. Sandal is making joke. And you know one thing I say? One thing I'm happy about. Right? All that they try to weaponize the courts. Glendon, Dolly, Leslin, all they try to weaponize the judiciary. It took some hits. But for the large part, it's still standing. It took some hits. The judiciary. The courts in Guyana. The judicial system, but it's still standing, a holding against the assault of the PPP. It's holding. And as I said, I, I, I didn't hear too much before. It wasn't on my radar in any great way. Just a sandal kiss soon. Right? But the fella is doing some work. The law of Guyanese can be proud of. So we're watching to see where this goes as well. It's quite a few things we're following, folks. It's quite a few things. And so the GTU, the GTUC, the Ghana Trade Unions Congress, they have joined this litigation now. They have joined the litigation, folks. That being said, <laughs> you know, I like. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta admire them boys. You gotta like this style. Right? They said this gathering in front of Freedom House yesterday was unwarranted. <laughs> Anything bad in this country, the PP says, is up new AFC. <laughs> They're only associated with the good. Anything bad. They said the gathering was unwarranted. <laughs> unwarranted that's what they're saying they're blaming the APNU AFC for spreading rumors you know they can't have it both ways you know they can't have it both ways on one side they say nobody listens to APNU AFC nobody listens to them and then when hundreds turn up in front of freedom they say what's oh, APNU tell them come <laughs> you can't have it both ways Rohan Basancham says that Justice Kisun is a fair judge. Nobody don't listen to the FC. But they send them. They have make up your mind, PPP. PPP make a struggle. 
Make up your mind and pick a struggle. Please and thank you. Pick a struggle. Somebody said we should sue y'all for defamation. <laughs> sue y'all for defamation. Pick a struggle. Nobody listens to us. But the larger point here, folks, the larger point, despite what the people want to say, people in this country suffering. Suffering. People don't give a million dollars in handout. It's a 15,000, a 25,000. You go in the supermarket now, 25,000. One bag you're coming out with. And it's not a salt bag, it's a plastic bag. Plastic bag, 25,000. So when people converge in those numbers, for a little freck, you can tell where we are. You can tell where we are. And people are suffering in this country. People are suffering in this country. And so if you see an avenue, we can get a five cents more that they didn't have. People go after it. I don't blame them. Right? I didn't hear. That's why I, I didn't turn up. I didn't hear. Right? People think that somehow people support this program financially in great numbers. In great numbers. By, if I had heard, I might turn up too because we got to keep going. We got to keep going. The lights don't pay for themselves. The student don't pay for itself. The internet don't pay for itself. The graphic artists don't get the work for free. <laughs> the people who help to curate our story don't do it for free. They, 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 they got mouths to feed you. The different service providers don't do it for free. <laughs> right. But the only thing is, we didn't hear. We didn't hear. And as you see there, Freedom House was unwarranted. They didn't share out anything. Folks said they intended to give out money to a select few. But you all in a small country and things get around here. Quick, quick, quick. Things that are wrong in this country, quick, 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 quick. They did intend to give a select few. Y'all know how to do it. Y'all know this style. Kwame and Kwame said it was unwarranted. <laughs> he said the people were duped. Won't be the first time people dupe anybody. And then go out there and do people today. So won't be the first time. Glendon, can I go to see you, Forbes? Wenda, we see you, Andrew. Wouldn't be the first time. Look, story here now. Let's talk about being duped. All right? We hear this often. Ali vows. This, 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 this Irfan Ali. Your president. You know what a vow is? They got two phrases. Let me see how much of y'all sharp here. He likes to use in this context. Something tragic happens. And he says, if and only vows, he has another phrase he uses. Interchangeably. Interchangeably. Another phrase. Let me see how you have how, how many of you share. Let me see if you all know the fellow we're dealing with. Let me see if you all know the fellow we're dealing with. Right. Let me see if you all know. Folks, I'm getting my, my glasses officially. I've been using a temporary glasses. <laughs> I can be able to see them Jagabats clearer from today. Officially, I'm supposed to be getting my glasses today. Getting back my glasses. My glasses broke many years ago. My little son stepped on it. I love those glasses that I have. Love them. You know, child walking the glasses one day. That was it. Just remember, I got to pick them up today. Step on it, pop. I said done with that. You know you walk you whole month for buy a spare spectacles and then your child 
step on your glass. When that child step on the glass, how old was John then? John probably was, I don't know, three? Turning 16 in August. He was about three, four. He's turning 16 in August. You know, that's when you buy your whole, you, can you hold month money? Hmm? Aye, Francis got it there. Marlin got it there. <laughs> you all know the man. <laughs> you all know the man. <laughs> I don't know if some others had it before. Y'all know the man. Uh, Sharky got it. <laughs> Y'all know the fella. Y'all like the real MVPs this morning. Y'all know the fella. Sharky got it. And some others. <laughs> Y'all know the fella. Ras Ricardo got it. Y'all know the fella. No stone unturned. See? We, we have a little glitch in the matrix this morning. We have a little glitch. See a little flicker. You all know the man, no stone and turn, Evelina Whitaker. <laughs> Marcy Agard. That's what the fellow says. Ali Vow's action. The Bartica sling. We lost two of our countrymen there, miners in Bartica. During the goal heights. He vows. He didn't vow for the Henry boys. He didn't vow for paper shirts. Uh, who else he vow for? No stone unturned. <laughs> uh, Ali, Ali, in a, Ali in, a, in, a, in a titanic quarry. Plenty stones in there. No stone unturned. Rastaman said fluff. Fluff. See? When the child step on my glasses, I see me whole life on Kaitra News front page. <laughs> I said, am I my child? I forgive you this one. I forgive you. <laughs> I see my whole life flash before me. Huh? All right. No stone unturned. How many times have you heard this? Huh? When a president says something like this, my thinking is that the police get their cue, spare no resources. We got to pull in a win for the big sahib. We can't put it to shame. Everybody else seems to know who killed paper shots, but Air Finale and the Ghana police force. Everybody seems to know. Pratik seems to know. <laughs> he has his own theories. <laughs> but the police... Yeah. Oh, that's a prime must know. Melly Mel know. Ronald Nixon knows. Bench Cup knows. Paul Slow know. Everybody in this country knows. No stone unturned. None. You remember the Henry boys? You remember them? Huh? Or the English? Remember the Henry boys? Yeah. Could you imagine both of the mothers died since then? And stone still turning. Stone still a turn. Both of the mothers. Bernadette. Elizabeth Narine. Elizabeth said critics know everybody's story but you and <laughs> Elizabeth, you know the whole thing. You know the whole thing. <laughs> you know everybody's story but your own. We coming around there, hold on. Hold on. You, you, you hit the nail on the head there, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you know the whole thing. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let me collapse again. How am I feeling? Mm. <laughs> How y'all are doing this morning, folks? Ali vows. Well, we don't even pay this one going. When Ali started vowing, like this is a cue for do the opposite. You're going to go slow. Five years later, the family's still waiting in a holding pattern. Like, I don't know. Like, the Ghana police force got a different dictionary. So when they see vow, they see go slow. <laughs> 
Take your time and peel your pint. Ali vows action. How many families still holding this? Huh? When Ali say I vow, I vow action, it's a pink slip. How many of you still holding a pink slip? They estimate 40,000 Guyanese got a pink slip still. 40,000. Yeah. Ali out here vowing action. Ali out here vowing action. General Secretary, you are live. I want you to know that first and foremost. Hold on. I wanted to get from you an update as in terms of the 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 mindset of the credit union going into these talks today. You are live, General Secretary of the Ghana Teachers Union. Cheryl, good morning to you. Good morning to your listening audience. Um, but you know we have been much um, anticipated outcome. We were awaiting the outcome of this entire 22 days of teachers being on the streets, and we were um, anxiously awaiting what will happen or uh, what was going to be the outcome of it. What we see is happening is a win for GTU. Um, we're quite a lot of persons um, probably they not seeing it this way, but let me say to you that the fact um, that they courts have to mandate the government to talk to us is a win for us because we were trying to get them to talk to us since 2020 and they weren't coming to the table to talk seriously with us mm -hmm. um you know how this government operates they call you to a meeting now just to say that they would have had a meeting and then three months after they call you to another meeting when you start making noise and, and this is what they do um just spotting, spotting every time. But the the courts have now mandated them to talk to us with regards to our fin financial issues based on the proposal we would have submitted since 2020 to this government. So today we are going, um, of course, the government, the courts, as a matter of fact, let me say this, the courts would have said to us, if by any way or at any time you feel that the government is put dragging on this process, we have a recourse to return to our recourse is to return to the court seeking redress. So that is comforting for us. Today we are going out there to start our talk, our negotiations, to be in our collective bargaining, mm -hmm. which this government were clamoring for while they were in opposition. They were saying to the AFC government, you need to talk to the you need to talk to the teachers. You need to return to collective bargaining. And when they're in office now, they forgot those talks. But today we're going to start those talks on the proposal 2019-23, that the GT would have submitted. We are going to talk this morning on specifically the financial issues, because we've been having talks with the Ministry of Education, and I'm sure you would have seen that be publicized. Right. But of course, the government, they have a way of turning things around, flipping the script to say, look, we were having talks, and they had talks only on the 31st of January. But let me make it clear that the talks we were having were based on policy issues, not financial issues, policy issues. And our main um, argument is that we should be talking on both the financial issues and the policy issues, which are so outlined in our proposal, but the government chose to talk on, on, propose, on the policy issues. So today we are talking on financial matters, yeah. 2019-2023. Um, the percentages that we would have asked for the year in 2019, we asked for 25%, and from 2020 to 2023, 20%. Now, um, not because we are asking for these percentages, it means that we are going to get them. But this is what this is our our ball our um ball point figures that we want to start the talks off at. So we are anxiously awaiting. The counter proposal from the government, which will form the basis for our discussions today. So we are asking for 25% in 2019. We are waiting to see what they will say to us that they have to offer. And we're going to start our discussions off from there. I want to use this opportunity again 
to thank our teachers and the parents who supported us while we were out in the sun for 23, um, 22 days. I nearly said 23, you know, because 23 is, is, is really synonymous with, with, the, with the PPP government, 23 years in the you know. So, I want to thank our teachers for turning up the year. I want to let you know that you would have made your point both locally and internationally because our stance out there has gripped the, or it would have gripped then, the attention of everyone across this globe because we were there, not only standing there as well, but we were on social media. So everybody all over the place was seeing it. And, and it's amazing that this government who, who pretends to claim care and profess to care and always talk about because we care had their teachers in the sun for 22 days, had our nation's children out of school for 22 days, four weeks and two days, Sharon. This government, this Minister of Education who claims to care, had our children out of school, not even considering the fact that our children got grade six assessment exams to write in another couple of mornings and the kids and C6. Mm -hmm. And still saying it here. And I want parents to note that the minister and all of our colleagues in the cabinet, including the PFS and the CEO and all of them, they don't care about your children. They only care about themselves because you know what? Their children were attending the, the private. Their children are attending private schools and they were in schools while your children were out of schools. So they don't care about your children. They care about, and you know what? But we have to mark these occurrences. We have to mark these situations. And let them and remind them when they talk about the care, to let them know four weeks of lost contact hours will never be redeemed. No matter how much double classes you put in, you cannot pick up the loss that we would have had for four weeks and two days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we were discussing with our audience earlier that we kind of bracing ourselves, knowing the PPP, knowing Priya Manik Chan, that they're going to come with something stupid in this meeting. They're going to say something stupid. They're going to make a silly proposal, perhaps just for the sake, you know, of walking in the DNA. Are you guys prepared for that? Well, what do you know, Sharon? We are prepared for so many things. But the fact that we have... um. The law on our side. Mm -hmm. We are sure that teachers are going to prevail. And I'm saying that um, to say this the court made, uh, uh, the judge made an, an order. He passed a judgment where he said um, the cutting of salaries and um, the, the non remittance of the Jews will continue. Correct. It was continued on the teacher salary was not be cut. And the chief education officer who was the composer of the next team because he did not go through the, 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 the normal process of, of other public servants and the public service uh, public service commission to be appointed, uh -huh. he was selected and he felt that this was a selection or his political selection that he too has immunity from the law. So he decided then to follow the court order and to send out a memo to say teachers' salaries and so on, teachers' salaries will be deducted. But you know what happened? They just had to put them in. Yeah. And and you know how how they you know how they they're always quick to, to to cry. You know, pre like to cry mm -hmm. when the CEO went to court and he cried and apologized and said he didn't he didn't mean to flow the court order, but um or he just felt that he wanted to just to return to schools. We wanted the court to lock him up. Long time. Sorry? We wanted the judge to lock him up. That's what we wanted. I, I want I wanted that too, but it's not the man prior to my day. But what I'm sharing, you know, on a serious, on a serious note, these folks don't care about the ordinary man and their children. They don't care about them. Because if they did, we would not have been at this point. Because could you imagine this, the proposal that was submitted since 2020 to this government? Since 
August, the second week of August, 2020. Mm -hmm. I think it's just been on the 14th or somewhere here. August 2020. And so these people are not serious about um things, let me use that word for the ones who this word, the lines and the conditions of work for ordinary guys. If you if we if we were to look at the way the contracts are being awarded. And the people who are getting these contracts to recognize that the ordinary man is there to continue being punished and oppressed. Yeah. And that transcends to every sector. So the education, education sector did not um exclude the teachers are all in that. We have talked about um the bunching for teachers. Because you know, all of our teachers are placed in one bunch, regardless of which school you're on. They're all in a bunch. And so we've spoken about the bunch of our teachers. Since 2006, we had that when Baron Javier was president there. All we got was for dragging by the government. Yeah. You know, when we got our debunction started, all the teachers were paid during 2015, 2020, when the coalition government was there. That was when we got the debunction issue started, and teachers were paid. There are still some monies to be paid, but of course the, we have the elections and we know all the things that happen and then you have the, those installed. They have refused to continue the payment of the bunching for our teachers. And then these same people talk about, we care about our teachers and we're doing this for our teachers and we're doing that for our teachers. But in actual fact, you don't care about the teachers. Because if teachers have to sit there to learn classes, that are supposed to be 15 in numbers or 20 in number, and you have teachers still running classes with 35 when they're supposed to have 15 or 20 in the class, then you don't care about teachers. We've always been arguing for floating teachers. So that just in case a teacher is off on medical, you don't have to split the class and, and give additional burden to other teachers in the level. You have a floating teacher who would be there to supervise that class. To teach them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This government is not interested in that. Wow. Wow. But they want to tell you, they want to tell you, oh, we have graduated this year 1,700 plus teachers. But we're not going to get into that because we know the story about the graduation of the, the 1,700 <laughs> teachers and, and those who weren't in class yeah, and yeah, those who did half of the class and everybody, everybody, everybody graduated, right? Yeah. We know that story, so we're not going to get there. But this is, the, this is within the DNA of this government to always be dishonest and to always feel that the ordinary man must continue to come to them for fish. They're not interested in teaching you how to fish. They're only interested in giving you a piece of a fish, half of a fish, and when that is finished, you have to come to them again. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, a lot of folks went down to Freedom House yesterday for the fish, but it didn't get done. But that being said, before <laughs> I, I, I know you have a busy day. A lot of folks were a little surprised that in the, um, the, in the agreement, um, monies weren't stated in terms of that being on the table for discussion in the agreement heading into these talks, that facilitating these talks. Many persons were surprised by that. So I'm quite happy to hear you talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, what, what, what in the GTU's mind would be that, that figure or percentages for the different years um, going into this meeting here. Well, so let me say to you that the agreement that we signed to pull the strike, um, to call out that strike, in that agreement, we could not state anything about monies because, remember, we had no discussions. And so we couldn't put monies and, and, and have an agreement on what percentage is expected. Today, we are dealing with finances. Today, we are talking about finances. Uh, we're not talking today about policy issues. We're talking about finances today. Salary increases for 2019 mm -hmm. to 2023. And then we still have the 2024 to 2026 salaries proposals, salaries and other conditions um, to deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, best wishes to yourself and the Gannon Teachers Union as you guys head off to that very, very important meeting today on behalf of our nation's teachers. Um, I know you guys as teachers always say that you all produce every other profession and you're absolutely right. 
best wishes going into these talks. Um, all of our children's lives and our own lives are going to be improved um, by the substantive things that come out of this meeting. Hopefully. Thank you so much, Sharon. And um, do have a good day. And let me say to the Guyanese uh, nation and to those who are listening outside of Guyana that you can depend on us. You can depend on us to ensure that coming out of this agreement, our teachers will benefit immensely coming out of this out of this agreement, out of these discussions and the agreement that is going to be signed off. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming through. Just short notice. General Secretary, YouTube. Folks, that's it. I was trying to pull her in early. Missed that q &A, but I was happy that we could do it at this time. Uh, that being said, folks, I want to just run through some other stuff quickly uh, that we were looking at uh, this morning. Um, they're telling us that um, this individual, the suspect, and we did cover this story a couple of days ago, who shot a senior government official's mother. We just learned a woman was shot. But we're now hearing it's a senior government official's mother. They didn't say who the senior government official is. Uh, the suspect has been arrested. Yeah. And even when we read the report, the report, the headers, suspect, senior government official mother and all of that. But, it, but they don't tell us who's the senior government official's mom. Who is the senior government official? You know, not a headline in today's paper. Hospital being renovated. They said that it, it, it has now been, you know, the health sector is going to be transformed. This is quite strange. Right? This is quite strange. It's quite strange. It's like if you're living in a house and because the house paint green, the quality of your life is somehow improved by that. If you're not investing in people, Investing in the personnel. Case in point. Case in point. Tony Vail uh, wrote a letter, a very scathing letter about the sugar industry the other day. And Tony Vail said that when Skeldon was built, the majority of the factory was automated. Was automated. And because none of the persons there understood the automation. They didn't have one technician who understood the automation. They had to switch the system to manual. I recommended that letter the other morning as required reading. I hope you had a chance to read it. He said none of them could have operated the, the automated system. And so they had to switch it to manual. That's what was happening there. It might be curious. You might have a state-of-the-art hospital, and I'm not saying that is what is there, because I don't trust them. When they see with my own eyes, I'm going to believe it. But if you don't have the people with the skills, you're going to give a brand new building, state-of-the-art, and they use state-of-the-art loosely. We, we do it in this country. We use it loosely. If you don't have the people with this technical know-how, you're going to have a telephone like Skeldon. You ain't got a white telephone like Skeller. So they said in my Mercury Hospital will transform with the, with the upgrades. They've had $100 million, I think, in upgrades. When the patients come through the door, and besides when they come through, when they leave, will their lives be better? Will their lives be better? People who really can't afford to go no place else. Turn my George Hospital. They may have all the equipment there, but if the personnel, they don't have the capacity. We're wasting time. If the customer service aspect, the service aspect of the sector is poor, what are we doing? So don't transform just because you paint up the building, the villa room. But the systems that people can engage over time. And that is our trouble in this country. We have to 
Read, 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 read any of those books that talks about successful corporations. They tell you a successful corporation, corporation has found its purpose. They find a couple of things. It's not a million. It might be one, two, three, five things that they can do well. And every day they wake up and they recommit and better themselves at doing those things well. That's what we got to do in the health sector. We're going to treat people nicely as a service. Engage the public with kindness. We're going to, we're going to capacity build our staff for the various aspects of whatever ailments we're trying to cure, improve, mitigate, what have you. You know? And we can try to do them well every day, not some days. Never be cutting a ribbon only. And over time, then we can talk about how the system and sector can be transformed. Yeah? Case in point. Case in point. Police Service Commission, Public Service Commission, going paperless. This sounds so nice when you hear it. Imagine this is transformation for us. This is transformation. People have gone this way eons ago. Right? And here is this paperless transformation. All you can do now is send, a, is send a, um, an application online. I thought you used to call it like an email. So <laughs> you incorporate an email system basically in a website. And, and suddenly you're gone paperless. Right? Tell me about transformations in the system when somebody don't even have to walk through the door. When you're applying for some position in the public or the police service, and you can do the whole process online. You can do the whole process online. You, you, you can only submit the application. You can upload your photographs, a copy of the documentation, maybe notarized or something like that by a JP, you know, by a commissioner of votes. You can do the whole thing online. All you can do here with this big launch they had is send the application for the work that you want. And then boy, you got a ribbon cut in for that. Because a website that you could produce probably for under um, 300 US. Any two-bit technician incorporates an email system in it. You can send your application online and suddenly that's a breakthrough. How long was the email invented? Neon Harding. How long was the email invented? Every time I got to engage a bank in this country and you see the long lines, folks, you can't go in and out in no bank in under three hours. You bust Republic Bank door. You see the line in every single day. What thing in this country? You got to have three hours of your life that you don't need to stand up in a line. And I was fascinated recently as we wrap up. It used to be that pregnant women would be called up to the front as a matter of courtesy. You know, people with little kids. I understand this country. You might have a mother, single mother, engage in a banking system. No little child is going to sit down for three hours still. No little child is going to do that. You can imagine 10 people with kids in the back for three hours. It's like a play park. We got to improve our systems. It used to be people with kids like that would be called up. We're going to tell you. Bank tellers watch the mother, the mother watch them, and you better stand for the line. It's a pregnant woman. I saw women with babies in their hands. You better wait to go like that. Right? We got a far way to go. And not because we can send an application through a website. That somehow is innovative. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we backward in this country. I thought you should call an email. <laughs> huh? You could pick up WhatsApp and talk to somebody any place in this world. 
They incorporate in the website and it's innovation for some reason. Huh? They call that um, telemedicine. <laughs> Folks, the world has gone on. <laughs> right? Ten years from now, we can start talking with AI. And all the innovations. Because you can be able to text someplace and a, a machine respond to you. They can say, innovative. Now is that what we should be talking about now? Not sending an email online. Gail to share a public and police commission to be talking to this nation about how they're engaging artificial intelligence for more efficient service. They're running out here to tell us, oh, you can send us an application for an email built into your website. Madness. Madness, folks. Sorry, we didn't get time to drill long in this one here. Required reading a letter to the editor in today's paper. An individual is talking about the erasure of the Mackenzie Sports Club. All right. Yolanda Thomas, rock on come in now. Marlon Thomas. Rap don't come in. The erasure of the McKenzie Sports Club. He said, what's the real purpose of the government with the sports club? Huh? Must say another um, Qatar deal going go down here now. Probably another Qatar deal going go down here now. Motorbikes donated to the police by a security company and another individual. All the billions we spending on the police force. Hmm? What are we doing with that money? What are we doing with the oil money? Congrats to the companies. What we really with the oil money in this country? Mm. Yeah. Finally, folks, finally. Finally. Remember the crane operator that died on the job site of Chapui Group Incorporated? You remember that? Huh? You remember that? Well, the folks asking for 80 million in compensation, the family. Critics were served in a lawyer's letter quite recently. I saw him ducking. 80 million. Yeah. From rags to riches to rags again. 80 million. The family asking for. People want to know why critics ducking. So I'm recently ducking. <laughs> What's that about, folks? Too much, apparently. Yeah. Now we say, oh, Lord. <laughs> Probably 180 million in compensation. Yeah. It is what it is. We said, so I'm recently ducking. Don't know what that's about. Don't know what it's about, but it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. Yep, there's a lot happening, folks. 80 million, that's what the family asking for. A lawyer's letter was served in him quite recently. Yep. 80 million. <laughs> I remember one politician, the National Assembly, right? Says when sorrows come, they come not a single spice. But I was a prophet. They come not a single spice, but as bounty lions, <laughs> but as battalions. Yeah, they come not a single eighty million folks. Exxon fighting for stuff. I need to fight for nothing. Exxon fighting. You see. Trying to block Chevron. Yes, trying to sell out billions of dollars. Yes, just got me. And trying to sell their share of the I out so there. Huh? For close to 60 billion US dollars. How has your life improved since you started selling on? Well, from the amount of people I saw rush down to Freedom House, I can tell you your life had improved much. Chevron just come, you know. Nigel, Andrew, Orwin, Ewart. 60 plus billion. Have telling out the share for. 
And next year, I'm trying to block it now. What have you gotten since we started pumping? Since we started pumping, what have you got? Nothing. The short of it. Or selling or nothing. Or selling residents complaining about the state of the roads there. Or selling or nothing, folks. Like so many communities in this country, they get nothing at all. First 15 things we think you ought to know about, folks, as we start the day today. Yep, thanks for joining us here in FYI. That's our time this morning, folks. That's our program. Thanks to the hundreds of you that join our program. The hundreds of you. I'm seeing over 1,300 persons are watching us here. And I'm so pleased by it. So pleased, you know. When we started this morning program, it was 50, 60, 100, 200. And now we've grown. And I'm happy about that, folks. Thank you. You are the real MVPs. Go ahead and have a great day, folks. And we're going to see you guys on the other side of the day. We're going to see you guys on the other side of the day. That's going to do it for us at this end. So happy having each and every one of you on with us this morning. Y'all make my day, folks. Y'all make our day at this end. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debbie and Sharky. All right. No stone unturned. Nigel and Magnell, Onessa, Rastaman, no stone unturned. Zion and Laverne Wade. Mother in law, how are you doing? Horace and Zion, all the other folks joining us this morning. That's going to do it for us at this end. From our house, have a fantastic day, folks.